Hey guys, you're watching Danski, the place to be to develop your creative skills. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create the Razor logo all in Adobe Illustrator. And you're probably thinking, Dan, why would I need to create the Razor logo? And that's a very good question, you probably wouldn't. But it's more about the tips, the tools, and the techniques that you use in creating a logo like this that you can then take from this tutorial and use to create your own awesome logos. So hopefully this is helpful, let's jump into it. Rightio, so we're now in Illustrator and I've created an artboard that is a thousand pixels wide and a thousand pixels high. And the first thing I'm going to do is just shimmy over here. You can see I've got a reference image that I'm going to be working from to create the Razor logo. We've got lots of curves in the snake design here and we're going to start by using the pen tool. So let's go back over to our artboard and grab the pen tool up here. And I'm going to try and do this as best I can. So I'm working from a reference image on my phone that you can't see because it's off camera. And I'm just going to very quickly just try and grab this outline of one of the snakes. Now this at the moment is looking pretty terrible, but don't worry about that because there's some really, really nifty tools that I'm going to show you in a moment that are going to help smooth out your curves just so you get a really nice finish. Okay, now of course we've used the pen tool. We've just created a path. We've got no fill and no stroke. So let's just drag over this, select the stroke from the bottom of the toolbar and we'll just pick, well, we'll pick black for now. So let's just double click that swatch, check that global box and click okay. And if we zoom in a little bit, we can also bump up that stroke weight and we can see this looks pretty terrible, but that's okay. That's okay. You can spend a lot longer getting your first attempt right, or you can just grab the direct selection tool. And once you've got a very rough shape, just go ahead and just start tweaking all of these anchor points. So I'm just going to smooth out some of these curves because some of these are quite terrible. And I'm just going to zoom in a little bit closer. There we go. Hopefully, this is pretty in line with the Razor logo. And just maybe bring this one out a little bit, bring this one down. So you can spend as much time as you like doing this. Okay, that's a slight improvement. There is something else we can do though, and I absolutely love this tool. And if you've never used this, it's going to blow your freaking mind. So select everything by dragging over it. And where you've got the shaper tool here, just left click and hold, and underneath you've got the smooth tool. Now it might deselect what you had selected, so just reselect it and then just grab the smooth tool. And what you can do with this is smooth out your curve. So I'm just going to left click and drag, and you can see it draws a line to show where you're drawing. Let go. And voila, you can see it has a crack at smoothing out your curves. Now, sometimes you might uh, do like a misstep and you might go off like that. That's fine, just get used to using the undo option here. Or Illustrator might not do it quite as you like it, so just keep doing it. And you can effectively just, just continuously brush over the lines until it smooths out and you're happy with it. So I think we're getting there. But as I say, you can spend as much or as little time doing this as you like. And I'm just going to zoom in. Just smooth this one out a little bit more. I could literally do this for hours. I'm such a perfectionist. But hey, this is a tutorial, so we're going to have to move along. There you go, Dan. You've had your chance. If you've messed it up, well, it's too late. So you can see from the stroke panel, I've already thickened this up as well, and I'm going to change the cap at the end to round, so we've got that nice rounded end at the edge of the tail. But at the moment, every element of this stroke is all the same weight. So what we're going to do is grab the width tool over here on the left. And again, this tool's brilliant. If you've never used it, you'll love this. And what we can do is zoom in so looking at the logo around about here the main body of the snake it gets a little bit thicker so you can see i can click on an anchor point or you can click on any point actually and i can make this thinner or fatter so let's make that a bit more chunky 
And I think maybe around here as well, we'll make that a bit chunkier. But then towards the end of the tail, of course this gets a lot thinner. So I can just literally go through and as the name of the tool suggests, adjust the width of certain elements. So let's make the head, we'll make that a tiny bit thinner. So there we go, that's looking pretty good. And the great thing about this is if I go and select it now and go to the stroke panel, if I decrease or increase the weight, all of those changes with the width tool, they stay relative to each other. So it's not gonna adjust any of those proportions. So that's really, really cool. So let's go back down to 26 points. Of course, the size of art board that you're using or the size of your design, you might need to use different values for some of the stroke weights. But I think this is looking pretty good, maybe? Hopefully, and we'll soon find out in a minute. So the next thing I'm going to do, in fact, no, I am just going to bump that up. Let's go up to 30, there we go. Right, so the next thing we're going to do is draw the head. Now there's loads of different ways that you could draw the snake's head. You could use lots of different shapes, combine them together. I'm going to do it the, the, the sort of lazy way and use the pen tool. It's still a pretty good way. So what I'm doing is I'm left clicking and I'm holding shift. So my next anchor point is at a 45 degree angle. So it snaps. And then as I drag, I get a nice perfect curve. And then I'm just going to go up here. Now I'm not holding shift anymore. Left click and drag that out. So we've got the snake's head or half of the snake's head. Now it wants to continue this curve. I don't want it to do that. So hold down the alt key on your keyboard and just left click on that anchor point. And then I'm going to create the forked tongue as well. So we're going to do something like this. Again, I don't want it to continue that curve. I'm actually going to zoom in quite a lot. So we'll hold alt click and it lets me then follow up with a straight line. So we'll go for something like this. Again, Alt, left click. And you can see I just deliberately overshot this anchor point here so that we do have some width to the snake's tongue because we're just creating half of the snake and then we're going to flip this over in a minute and duplicate it. And you can see here, has a circle next to the pen tool icon. That indicates that I'm going to complete the shape. There we go, shape complete. And again, if you've done this with the pen tool like me, the lazy way, you can use the smooth tool to smooth out these curves a little bit if you want. Boom, there we go, fantastic. Now what I'm going to do is actually change this to a fill, just so it matches the rest of the snake's body. And you can just swap the fill and the stroke here at the bottom of the toolbar, boom. And I'm going to go up to object, down to transform and reflect. Just check that preview box and you can choose which axes you want to reflect along, whether it's horizontal, vertical, or a specific angle. And then you can click copy. And what it does is it creates that copy. And I'm just going to drag it out. And make sure it snaps in place, zoom in nice and close. It's over snapping there, let's go up to here. Okay, so go to the view menu, if you find that it's Snapping in a way that might seem peculiar, just turn off snap to pixel. Snapping to pixels is great for some things, but for me, snapping to point, that is absolutely fine. That's what I want my anchor points to snap together. Pixels at the moment are irrelevant, so we'll switch that one off. Otherwise it tries to snap to points and to pixels, and that might not be what you want. And I've lined that up terribly. Okay, let's go back in. Now, if you do struggle with this bit, as I clearly am, you can go into outline mode, which is command or control Y. And you see a wireframe, so it strips out all the style. Boom, you can snap everything perfectly in this wireframe mode. Command or control Y on the keyboard, and you come out of it. And there you go, you know that everything's lined up. And I think I've done a terrible job drawing the snake's head there, looking at the logo. That is quite awful. So what I'm gonna do is grab the direct selection tool and just drag over everything at the bottom and hit delete or backspace. So we're left with the tongue. And then with the direct selection tool, just drag over those bottom two anchor points, go to object, down to path and select join. So now what it does, it, it completes that shape. Now, while it might be slightly annoying that I messed that up, it's actually a good opportunity to just check out how you can do that with anchor points so you can Use the direct selection tool to select any random anchor points that you've got and then just go to object, 
path and join and you can actually join them together so if you have a shape that for whatever reason is incomplete you can actually complete it that way as well as the pen tool right i'm just going to zoom in on the snake's head on my phone and let's have another go at drawing the snake's head a bit more accurately this time this is just the way it goes sometimes you draw things you look at it and you go that is rubbish although it's always easier when it doesn't happen when you're trying to record a tutorial <laughs> this isn't going to be much better now <laughs> right we're gonna to have to go with this one otherwise we'll just sit here and this tutorial will be about an hour long and it will be me just drawing a snake's head over and over again so we're just going to copy drag that out you can see those smart guides nicely snap this in place now i can drag over this and I could pull this around, skew it out a little bit. Again, use that direct selection tool to just adjust individual anchor points if I wanted to. So I can still move this around a little bit, but this is going to be quite small. So let's not worry too much. So there we go. I've got those two halves. You can see them in outline mode and I'm going to drag over both of these halves. Just go to window down to Pathfinder and from the Pathfinder panel, I can select Unite, and it just combines those two shapes into one. And I can drag up here as well. There we go, see those smart guides? Very, very kindly helping me line everything up again. That looks pretty good to me, I think. Yeah, cool. So let's drag over all of these. And again, Pathfinder panel, top left option, Unite. It just combines individual shapes into one shape. Although this is permanent, so make sure that you're happy with it before you go ahead. And then what we can do is just drag this into position. You've got the rotate tool here, which is R on the keyboard. That's the shortcut. And we'll rotate the snake's head. Get that in position. So it lines up something like this. Okay. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. And again, if you see anything that looks a little bit not smooth or whatever, you can just grab that smooth tool, just smooth it out a little bit more. So at the moment, all of this is still editable, but we do have a combination of a stroke. So you can see the path here with the stroke applied to it. And then we have a filled shape over here. So what we need to do next is we need to combine these both together. So if we well, first of all, I'd recommend dragging over everything, holding the Alt key on your keyboard, and just drag a copy up over there. Just in case anything goes wrong, you've got that editable stroke right there, kind of like a checkpoint. Now we can drag over everything, go to Object, Expand Appearance, Object, and Expand. What I like to do is just go Object, Expand, Expand Appearance, whatever it is, until it doesn't let me do it anymore. And you can see now that the stroke is no longer a single path, but it is actually just a shape with a fill, just like the snake's head here on the left. And you can check this by dragging over everything. And if it doesn't show a question mark here, a question mark is when it doesn't know what the fill is, then if it has the same color black, you know that you're all good. And we can go and change the color of this if we wanted, but we'll, we'll save that for later. So what we're going to do again is just jump into outline mode, command or control Y. And as we did before, we've got lots of individual shapes, drag over everything, pathfinder panel, top left option, unite. And there we go. It just streamlines everything into one single shape, which is always good practice because it just makes the next few steps a lot simpler and it can avoid any complications with shapes not merging correctly or whatever. So it's just a really, really good thing to do. Okay, let's come out of outline mode. We've done one snake, which is fantastic. Now, something I should have done before I finalized that is just give this a really bright color because this is a Razer logo tutorial. And I should have just checked actually that this, <laughs> this is pretty decent. So we'll find out now, moment of truth. Let's rotate it around a little bit. Okay, so we're a little bit off. We're a little bit off, but it doesn't matter. We're not really learning how to draw the Razor logo. It's the tips, tools, and techniques. That's what we're learning. So we'll just undo that and we'll just give this a go. See what happens, right. 
so we've created a snake. What we're going to do now is just drag over this and go to Effect, Distort and Transform, and then go to Transform. And it brings up this dialog box here and we can just check the preview box so we can see any changes in real time. And I'm just going to add one copy. Now there's 360 degrees in a complete rotation of something like a circle. If you divide that by three, so we have the three snakes, that gives 120. So we'll enter that as the angle. And now I can move this horizontally and vertically and essentially offset this copy. And you'll see here it gets it goes up to 100 pixels and I can't go any more than that. But something Illustrator doesn't tell you is that you can actually go more than that. So if you just type in a value that is higher than 100, you can go higher. So I'm just trying to increase these just to get this first one in the right position. So if I go, oh, let's be a perfectionist, 265. There we go. No, 262. Oh, maximum perfection. There we go. So we want these two parts of the tail to touch. That's how the logo looks. Now I've got this one in the correct place. I can change the number of copies to two. And then we get that third one as well. Click OK. Now in outline mode, it still looks like one snake. All we've done is apply an effect to that. And if you go to the appearance panel, if you don't see it on the right, just, just jump up here. It's down there. So with this snake selected, we can see that we've applied a transform effect and we can click that, go back in, edit it. We can drag it to the trash if we want or hit the trash icon. So this is just an effect. These aren't really actually here and I can't select them. So all we need to do when we're happy is go to object, expand appearance. And you'll now see an outline mode that it looks like this. And if I select this, everything is selectable. These are all just shapes now. There's no effects or anything going on in the appearance panel. So as before, it is a final thing. Like, so make sure you're happy before you go ahead. But now what we can do is just go to the Pathfinder panel. And again, unite everything together. So this is now one complete shape. So there we go. Not too bad. We're getting there slowly. So next, I'm going to just jump into the Swatches panel. And well, I could go and edit this global swatch or I could just select the green here. So we've got RGB green. We'll just make that global. That's pretty close to what we're going for. And I'm actually going to grab the rectangle tool and add a background. So let's just make the background the width and height of the artboard. And for this, I will select black. And then go to object, arrange and send that to the backwards just so it's behind everything. And then what we can do is we can select our razor logo, the shape we've created, and just swap that fill and stroke round. And then from the stroke panel, just increase that stroke weight. So something like this. Now at the moment, the stroke is aligned to the center, but we want to align this to the outside of the path. So if we click this, You'll see it changes and looks a lot more like the actual Razor logo. I know the design's a little bit off, but as I say, it's about the tools and the techniques for creating something like this. And we do have these crazy, <laughs> I don't know what is going on here, but an easy way to get around these kind of points coming out is just to round off those corners with a round join. At the moment, we're using the default mitre join, round join. Oh, there we go. Much better. And there we go. We've successfully, sort of successfully recreated the Razer logo in Adobe Illustrator. And there we go. That was how to create the Razer logo with a bunch of tools, tips and techniques thrown on the end as well. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, please do drop them down below. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.